All right, syncing. Okay, all right. So let's talk about the DJI Mic 2. Yeah, this isn't gonna be the best, but uh, we'll make it work. So there's a little bit of an echo in the room, so this might not be the most clinical testing of this, but I've been using this for a little while. I gotta say, I got, I got a bit of a bone to pick with it. There are some good things, and there are some bad things about it, and we're gonna go over it, yeah. So I actually used the DJI Mic 1. I actually, I actually really liked it. It had a few quirks, I had to send it back, get it RMA, due to a syncing issue, but overall it worked great for what I was using it for. This one, however, I have not had much of a chance to test it. However, I'm already noticing some things that are not that professional about the professional audio. <laughs> quality that they're putting out that it that it has i'm gonna break this out gonna connect it to the camera and then we will we will begin the the clinical trial and i'll go over why i'm why i'm a little annoyed with it so this little microphone comes in a convenient little package and it has a lot of great features that come with it comes with two units, each with its own dead cat, a bunch of cables. It's got two separate microphone transmitters and a receiver. Both wirelessly connect and record locally, which is really neat. Let's sync up again. Perfect. Okay. All right. Clack, 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 clack. Okay. So now I'm using the DJI Mic 2. Here's the thing. The big problem I have with a lot of comparison videos for this microphone is that there are a lot of apples to apples comparisons with these microphones. However, there hasn't been any comparisons with this to an actual studio setup. So I've got my old blue ember here. Um, hooked up to a preamp so we can see what actual professional audio quality sounds like compared to the DJI mic. Maybe, I, I would assume, you can hear a bit of a difference as I switch through these microphones. When I say I have a little bit of a bone to pick, now, I'm not expecting this quality. However, I am expecting quality that could be somewhat similar to what you can achieve with a studio microphone, which I, I don't think we're getting in here. It is... Uh, very boxy. It sounds it sounds compressed uh, right out of the box. No audio processing on it. There is actually a noise canceling feature, like a background noise canceling feature, built into the mic that you have to turn off. Which I mean, hey, you know, if it if it ends up working, it works. I'd rather do it in post processing. If you're on a phone though and recording, this is great for for phone recordings. However, I do think that the previous iteration of DJI DJI mics sounds better than this. Um, you really notice it on the plosives and the S's specifically. Um, that's kind of make or break it. It sounds very, very boxy, very tinny. I don't think it has a very round, full, rich, open sound that you're looking for for a professional quality microphone. Uh, maybe we should go outside where it's not so echoey. All right, okay, so now we're outside. Um, just wanted to give an outdoor you know, an outdoor kind of perspective on this thing. And this video is mostly just me testing to make sure I'm not crazy. I don't mean for this to be a negative video. This this mic has a lot of great features, you know, and it, it, it was the same with the first generation. It's got a really nice charging case. It's really great for grab and go. You can put the mics in, take them out real easy. Um, it's got different attachments for different devices. Just really overall super convenient. It's got a nice magnet that you can, that, and they actually made the magnet stronger. So it's like I can barely even get it off, but now I can just put the magnet in my shirt. Boom, mic's right there. I don't have to worry about it. Or I can take the mic itself, put it in the shirt and have the magnet facing out so you can't even see the mic. I, however, this, this does affect audio quality depending depending on where you put it. If you're wearing a windbreaker, don't even try it. One of my videos I recorded on my other channel, it was just absolutely just unusable audio from this mic when I had a windbreaker on. Not sure why, it sounded extremely muffled. I've never had a problem with the previous microphone, you know, hearing hearing voices through materials like that, but it's, um, yeah, maybe my expectations are just a little too unrealistic. I don't know how I feel about this. I really don't know how I feel about this. I'm gonna have to put it through its paces some more in some professional capacity to actually see the usefulness of 
of this current generation. The last one, I mean, I dropped it off of a 30 foot, I had managed to drop it off of a 30 foot, a 30 foot high roof. So it hit the ground. It was still recording, no problems whatsoever. Just a little scuff on the mic. It was very, very durable. This looks like it's a much more cheaply made, hold on, cheaply made plastic, not very, I don't know. I mean, it looks shiny and sleek and nice, but I don't know if it's actually the, um, I don't know if it's the most durable. You know, mess it up, because it looks like there's a circuit board right there behind it. It's semi-translucent. It looks, it looks fancy, but yeah, I don't know. So my point being, about the audio quality itself. Generally, you want a microphone to have a nice open sound. Currently, I'm using a currently I'm using a negative 4 decibels on the receiver and a negative 4 on the actual um, actual mic unit. When I recorded my last video, uh, I had it I had it negative 8 on the transmitter and plus 8 on the uh, receiver and it ended up sounding really just blown out it had a really weird profile to it and I I just I know I'm not a pro audio channel I'm not I'm not here to review audio equipment but it, it plays into the creative process as a videographer and as a photographer videographer someone who uses camera equipment and and video recording equipment it's kind of it's kind of important to have audio that isn't wonky like it's fine if it's not the most stellar audio in the world but if it just sounds blown out or like like you're you're just trying to blow someone one's eardrums out even when it's not loud I don't know it's it's very odd and it doesn't it doesn't make it very easy to automatically control the gain like other other mics I've used like the wireless mic the the Rode wireless mic go I think it's called um, I used those a couple years back and they they use they they had an automatic gain control that was really uh, really useful and it it, it it balanced everything out, made sure nothing was too blown out, and you had three different tiers of gain control, um, and you would just pick the one that would work the best, and that 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 was pretty handy. And we never had any peaking issues, any of that. I've been told that because this is 32-bit float, I can scream into it. Um, I've screamed into it. I've actually maxed it out a couple times. I don't think 32-bit uh, float is is anything to write home about, especially if you're overloading Especially if you're overloading the mic itself. If you're overloading the mic's capacity, it doesn't matter if you have 32-bit float. You're just kind of frying the mic with your voice. So um, I think the individual hardware capabilities of this mic are not reflective of the price tag that it's being sold for, which is, uh, for the complete kit, I believe I paid $350. Definitely a steep, steep price. You know, you've got, you've got each mic itself is $100. That's what I paid for the studio mic that's in my room. You know, equal, equal pricing. The mic units should have similar hardware. I doubt that the wireless transmitters on here cost that much to, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> But I mean, you pay a hundred for the each transmitter. You pay a hundred for the wireless receiver. You pay probably fifty bucks for the case and all that. So I don't know. Again, this video is just for me to make sure I'm not crazy. I'm holding the mic. I'm making sure it's not, you know, rubbing up against anything. It is an optimal distance from my mouth, just to see if the actual quality is comparable. So we'll see. Um, let me know if let, let me let me know if you guys have gotten this and if you guys are having any issues with it. Um, I might do more gear reviews in the future. I I I do have a lot of gear that I have to review. I want to re-review my RS3. I want to re-review. Well, I want to I want to actually get a new camera so I have a a baseline for that, but um, so that I can review review my camera equipment, but. Um, I don't know. I'm being a little too serious with this video. Uh, let's just 